Well, welcome back. I am so excited that you're here. And as this week is all about being empowered at work, and we're going to do this again, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about diversity, specifically Black people and diversity. I think we need to talk about it. Black History Month just ended. Let's go. My name is Stephanie D. McKenzie, and I am still your favorite empowerment coach. I hope if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're well, if you're welcome back. If you're just coming back, welcome. For those of you who are new, I do not do edits. I do every video as if it's live. So that way you can see my flaws, my flub ups, all of that. So anyway, like I said, I want to talk about diversity because I think that's important, especially coming off of Black History Month, African American Heritage Month. Black Heritage Month, whatever you call it. All right. And to do that, I wanted to talk about two things that I saw over the course of the month. And now that we're in March, I can definitely say this is what happened. And truth be told, I've seen this over the years. And so now that I have this platform to share with you, I want to bring these things to your attention. Okay. So today I'm going to be talking about two things that actually don't celebrate the diversity of black people and three things that do. All right. So if you're liking the video thus far, make sure you click like, let's see if you still like me a little later before you hit subscribe. All right, let's get into this. So two things, and I use notes, two things that don't actually celebrate the diversity of black people is only celebrating black people during black history month. I saw some amazing efforts by organizations to say, this is the history, this is what happened, this is this person, they invented this. And as of March 1st, it was gone. Now you could say, well, Stephanie, it is Women's History Month. Yes, it is. But I would like to see there be a commitment to celebrating all year round, but we'll get to that in the second part, right? And then unfortunately, there were a lot of companies that only focused on black trauma slavery, history, not looking at the accomplishments that have happened in the 21st century or even in the 20th century that you know were recent and non-traumatic, okay? Black experience and black culture, and there is more than one black culture and there is more than one black experience, but it's not solely slavery and civil rights. I need you to dig deeper. There are more accomplishments. There are more things that have happened to black people in this country and who have come to this country than just that. Okay, all right, good talk. Next thing, and this is something that I've seen for about 20 years and I was so, not so much excited, but I was so relieved to see it one time on the award-winning show Insecure. Hi, Issa Rae, I'm definitely a fan of your work, but there's a character in the show that is named Molly. Now the show has done a series finale. So if you wanna catch it and stream it, you absolutely can. But uh, there's an attorney on the show, Issa's best friend named Molly. And Molly is not a manager to my knowledge within the law firm where she works. However, they had the summer associates come in and one of them was named Rashida and Rashida was very loud and boisterous and hey girl. And she was a lot of things that were not considered to be very corporate. And so, the partners had a conversation about her and her behavior, but chose to triangulate, it looks like a circle, triangulate Molly into reprimanding and correcting her. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because honestly, what that reads as is, hey, you're Black. We have a problem with somebody else Black. So why don't you just go in and corral the Black folks? No, she's not a manager. This, this, this individual does not directly report to her. There's no reason to triangulate her with the situation. Now I get it. Sometimes non-Black managers and supervisors may be a little bit timid or apprehensive in talking to a Black associate or a subordinate because they don't know what's going to happen. Maybe they'll say it was discriminatory. Maybe they'll say it was racist. Maybe they'll file a lawsuit and I'm like, all of those things could happen with anyone. That should not stop you from taking the chain of command that you would normally take with any other associate, subordinate, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So none of this ethnic triangulation, that's not a good move. 
All right, so those are two things that don't necessarily celebrate. Let's make this video, let's leave it on a positive note. Let's talk about three things that do. One of which I've already talked about. You ready? Ongoing acknowledgements, not just in Black History Month. Ongoing acknowledgements of accomplishments, successes, happiness, joy, non-trauma information. It can be done. It can be woven into the tapestry of the organization. In fact, it can be something as simple as putting a quote from a, a, an African-American or a person of color, if, if, if that's, you know, we can be expansive, but since I'm Black, I, I kind of skewed this to Black people. But you could put a quote on your agendas. You could use something that someone said as motivation. Maybe there's a nice quote from Maya Angelou. Maybe there's a great quote from Oprah that you can use as motivation. There are ways to weave that into the tapestry of your organization and not have to put all of this energy into Black History Month, okay? Definitely, Black History Month is good. Black History 365 is better, all right? Next thing, you know, there's this conversation around a seat at the table. And every time I say this, I happen to be sitting at a table and I'm looking at my dining room table and I'm saying, a seat at the table is, it's okay. But I think the opportunity to build your own table is even better. And what I say to you as business owners and leaders, because that's who I serve, high achieving business owners, coaches, and leaders, is that don't be threatened by your multi-talented, multi-hyphenate, multi-potentialite, whatever term you want to use, team members that say to you, hey, I, I love the work that we've been doing within this organization or within this task force or this team. This is something that matters to me. I want to lead an initiative to do X, Y, and Z. That should be celebrated. That's allowing them, give them the resources and allow them to build their own table. As long as it doesn't take away from their, from their current responsibilities, as long as you don't see anything slacking or lagging behind, if an organization wants to contribute, if a person wants to contribute more to the organization that they're aligned with, that is to be celebrated. And here's the thing, it will make them a better team member knowing that they can bring certain skill sets to the table, their own table, and do well at your table as well. Just my 22 cents on that. Last thing, policies that have learning opportunities. That sounded really convoluted, didn't it? I know, I know, I know. But wait, and it's so funny. Every time I say something, like my nose wants to do this thing. I don't know, if you watch any of my other videos, my nose likes to like act up when I'm saying meaningful things or things that excite me. In fact, if you go back, I think to the Boundaries with Toxic Family Members video, I think that was the one where my nose just would not stop. It's just like, that's, that's what you want to do. So to me, that's a sign that my nose knows that I'm saying something meaningful to you or that it's too cold in here. I'll go with the first one. Okay, great. So policies and procedures are ways that we control organizational culture and behavior. Let's, let's, just, be, let's just be honest about that. Okay, most organizations have a code of ethics. And even if you're a small organization with just one person or two people, I think it's important that you set forth your mission, your vision, your code of ethics. And you began to create some semblance of organizational culture because as you scale, you want to have that in place. Okay, so I'm on board with the policies. That's great. What I'm not on board with is when those policies have to be exacted, if you will, that it becomes a, a, a punishment for the individual who has said whatever. Let's say, let's say, let's get more specific. You have a policy against racial slurs. Let's say somebody gets a little reckless at the water cooler. Okay, they have to come in and sit down with an HR team member or whatever your chain of command is in your organization. And then out of that meeting comes a suspension or a demotion or a whatever. What I'm asking you to do as someone that has over 30 years of entrepreneurial experience, who was a business professor for 11 years, who has a master's degree in business, who also has a master's degree in Christian leadership, which for me is very much expansive, expansively looking at the spiritual context of being a part of organizations. 
So I'm bringing you all of this to say, think about instead of demoting and, and doing these reprimands and maybe doing suspensions and all of these things, what about assigning them an opportunity to volunteer with an organization that serves a particular ethnic group that they made the ethnics are about? Now, I can't take credit for this idea. I actually saw it uh, in practice the first time on the TV show, Soul Food, which I love, beautiful show, well done, amazing cast. And yes, it was taken from the movie of the same name. But there were two young men in that particular uh, episode that were coming downstairs, a, a black young man and a, I believe he was Jewish actually. And they were, they were saying little things. We'll just leave it at that. They were saying things that you probably didn't want anybody else to hear. And they were fairly racially insensitive. And so their parents heard them and they assigned them both to learn more about their own culture. So they both had to go learn about the Jewish culture and the significance of, you know, the bat mitzvah and all of that. And then they both had to go learn about rites of passages, rites of passage for African American children. And there are such there are such programs, and I believe that they do still exist. And so in that, in seeing that, that was an opportunity to unlearn, because what we have to realize is that. Many times our, our perspectives and our thoughts on race and ethnicity, they're learned. Somebody taught us that. So what do we do with it? Give them the chance to unlearn. Give them the chance to take an active role and unlearn what they have learned. Because ultimately as a human, we have our biases and we always seek to confirm them by giving them the opportunity to unlearn by way of taking an active role in a community project or, or maybe going to a, an event and, and taking copious notes, this gives them the opportunity to dismantle said bias. And that may make them better in the long run. Think about what that would look like if when people in your organization miss the mark, we'll just say, I know I'm, I'm keeping this light people, okay? When they miss the mark in being racially sensitive, that you give them an opportunity to learn and to unlearn. I think that could be a really great thing. Almost, the, the, um, almost with the same effect as sending children that have been misbehaving in class to meditate versus sending them to detention. Take a look at that, they have, Google it. There's been amazing studies on that. Anyway, literally, that is all I have to say about that. I'm checking the time to make sure that I did okay. I think I did. Anyway, I wanted to tell you that if you're a business owner or you're a leader and you're watching this, hopefully there's something that was meaningful for you and your team. And please, please feel free to check out the playlist. We have a few playlists on boundaries and we also have an Empowered at Work playlist. Um, we can also bring this to your organization. Again, there's only two things here, so many more. Three things here, so many more. So if you feel like you want to dive deeper with your team or your organization, then by all means, see the comments box below because we will have additional resources as well as a link to my calendar. So I would be more than happy to come out and have a conversation with you or to converse over Zoom, whatever works. Anyway, as I said before, and I kept talking, that's all I had to say about that. I'm going to get out of here. My name is Stephanie D. McKenzie. I am a speaker, a teacher, an author, and a coach here to remind you to always be your own superhero. And as I always do, thank you guys so much for loving and learning and unlearning with me. See you on the next video.